Let's start now to move in into the surface mode. So if I click on the V button over there, it will change the layer into the surface. And now we have different set of brushes. A lot of the tools, they the same as in the Voxel, so we will not talk about them. But let's talk about the brushes and how they are different. So the brushes in the surface mode have these tool options, which is pretty much almost exactly the same as the Voxel brushes. So I'll give the link to that video where I talked about in more depth. We do have this option here called subdivision. So if I click auto subdivide, it will allow me to increase detailing when I sculpt on this mesh. And you can see here, if I turn on the wireframe, that's how the wireframe is different. The clay brush itself is a nice generic brush uh, for sculpting. Then we have clay fast. Clay fast doesn't allow you to have any other alphas, but the default one, which is just a square one, and that's to used for building the basic shapes of your subject. The draw brush allows you to pick different alphas. It's kind of like a strong extrusion brush. So when I turn on the auto subdivide, um, I'll kind of it allows me to build the shapes out a bit more and out. So that creates pretty strong. Uh, some cool interesting shapes and of course I can switch to more noisy alpha and I can see how that affects the, the surface. It's pretty cool, really fast compared to if I were doing that in voxels. Then we have flatten brush, it does what it says, we can flatten a surface and it's got this interesting parameter called pose smooth so it can kind of do flatten and smooth then at the same time. If you hover over Flatten, you'll see other options like Flat Polish. It's probably too strong. Loot is more like a fill brush. So it will fill in that hole. Chisel is interesting for some chisel effect. And Trim Adaptive, which is a usually pretty strong I guess chisel that's good for creating rocks and surfaces to cut through and cut away. Fill tool does exactly what it says, just fills the cavities. And you can see it's not as amazing as the voxel fill tool, but you know it's pretty good. Build up brush is really similar to the draw. You can, if you have the auto subdivide on, it can really start building the volume up from the surface. Extrude brush allows you to extrude everything at like a single thickness, and you can switch between brushes or between, say, so called rectangular and that. It does overlay on top of each other, so if you're doing uh, one layer, you got to make sure that it does not let your mouse off. Otherwise, you'll be just doing it on top of each other. Expand, or you can also call it inflate. It will just do what essentially it says it is doing. Expanding everything around. Inflating everything around. Absolute is similar to extrude. It will create you this layer. It's a bit more like a harsh brush than extrude. Rapid is a nice sculpting brush, has a nice flow to it to add, subtract some strokes. If I hover over Rapid, I can also see other options. They're really just some variations of the Rapid brush, so feel free to play around with them. They pretty much doing the same thing, it's slightly different feel to them. I really like pinch brush in 3D code and the voxel pinch and surface pinch they're different so I actually prefer to use the surface pinch in voxel mode and then just apply it to the voxel. If you hover over the pinch tool you get the roof pinch and smart pinch. So smart pinch is like a polish pinch that you can do on top and roof pinch is pretty much the same as well. It's just a bit more stronger than the smart page. The shift brush allows you to shift the volume a little bit. 
and it does an interesting effect, which is a little bit unusual. I still prefer using just the move tool to move stuff around rather than shift, but we can achieve some interesting effects with this tool. The smooth tool, you have it on your shift button all the time, but it does have a few options here. So we can go and do super relax, which I presume is a stronger smooth, smooth convex, this is more like a fill tool, a smooth concave, which will fill in into the gaps, and tangent smooth, which is an interesting one that doesn't affect, say, 90 degree angle right here, but smooth is other parts of the mesh. Sharpen tool is interesting one. It essentially does the same thing as uh, Photoshop sh sharpening. So everything gets sharper and if you overdo it, it becomes, becomes pretty ugly. But if you do it a little bit, it kind of just slightly add extra detail into your piece. Freeze tool is really useful because I can freeze some parts and then push the stuff around. And usually to clear the mask, clear the frozen area, I press Ctrl D, which is my hotkey for resampling. So I do resample and then drop the mask. If I hover over freeze, I have surface height. So I can hide some parts of the model and it will be really quite the same as freezing it. So now I you could have seen I've hidden the part of the object, moved it up, and I got this nice, super clean line um, across here. The snake clay allows you to do extreme deformations of the mesh. It automatically changes the topology, so I can really draw a new object out, almost like in the voxel mode. 